Tonight, several world leaders now saying the 176 passengers killed in a plane crash in Iran might be victims accidentally caught in a retaliation plot. A scooter company given a contract to operate in San Antonio is now leaving the city. Plus a cold front in the forecast. Meteorologist Adam Kasky will be here in a few moments to give us a look at this weekend's weather. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 tonight from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Preserving history is a big part of San Antonio, so making changes to historic districts and landmarks in our city can be a huge decision. That's where the city's Historic and Design Review Commission comes in. It's responsible for reviewing applications for those changes. You might have heard a lot about the HDRC lately in our coverage of the controversy that's been surrounding the redesign of Alamo Plaza. So what are the responsibilities and the powers of the HDRC? Tonight, our Tiffany Huertas helps us understand. And all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Aye. Motion passes. Thank Last you. month, the city's Historic and Design Review Commission, or HDRC, was responsible for approving the first phase of the Alamo Plaza redesign. This is just one of hundreds of cases the HDRC hears every year. It is not just about historic buildings. It also includes um, design review in like in the river along the San Antonio River. And they also look at everything um, like city projects like um, new terminal at the airport or new libraries or fire stations and things like that. HDRC works with the Office of Historic Preservation or OHP. Shannon Miller is the director. Miller says historic preservation overall started to boom in the United States in the late 60s. The King William was one of the first historic districts really in the country, um, definitely in the state, and so um, that was kind of re where we started. Miller says today San Antonio has over 30 historic districts. The commission's major focus is preserving that history. What's most common is, you know, someone that owns a historic building, like they, are, they live in a historic district and they decide that they want to build a garage or make an addition to their house or something like that. Those types of things have to go through the commission for a recommendation. But how do cases get to the commissioners? A person must submit an application to OHP. Staff then reviews it. If it's approved, it moves forward to the HDRC. After the commissioners review it, they make a recommendation and it goes back to OHP staff. Not all cases have to go before the HDRC. They can be approved by the OHP. Once approvals are issued, it's up to the applicant to then move forward with their proposed plan, in the case of the Alamo or any other plan. There are 11 commissioners that sit on the HDRC and they are appointed by the city council. They meet twice a month and they don't get paid since they are volunteers. We have to have an architect and a planner and a um, somebody that's related that has experience in historic preservation. Um, there's also more general categories like just business and a broad range of, of backgrounds. Miller says having a diverse board helps with the different cases they see. The caseload has multiplied many fold in the last um, five or six years. The HDRC reviewed 688 cases in 2017. In 2018, 686 cases. And last year, they reviewed 749 cases. Miller says the reason for so many cases could be a result of a strong economy and people are working on their homes. The HDRC and the OHP are also responsible for approving demolitions within historic districts. For example, last year, Beacon Hill Elementary School was demolished after an 18 month battle with the OHP to preserve the school with a historic designation. But the building was considered a safety hazard. Myra. Thanks, Tiffany. There is now one less e-scooter option in San Antonio. Lime announced it will no longer operate here and then 11 other markets across the world. The scooter company says it's refocusing resources and trying to increase profitability in 2020. Lime also says fewer riders and higher fees made it just too expensive to do business here. We talked with TechBlock CEO David Hurd about what might have led to the company's decision. I think some of it is also tied to just churn in the market as these young tech companies are figuring out what makes sense for them and what doesn't. Lime's decision to leave San Antonio comes about a month after the company was given one of three city contracts to operate up to a thousand scooters here. Those contracts, which were also given to Bird and Razor, would have allowed for a total of 3,000 scooters on the streets. That was supposed to begin January 12th. 
The city did issue a statement in response to this decision today, saying, quote, City of San Antonio staff will proceed with contracts with Burden Razor. Burden Razor will keep the permits capped at 1,000 per vendor for a total now of 2,000 permitted dockless vehicles, end quote. Adam Kasky is with us tonight to talk about not only the big changes we saw today, but how long they may or may not last. Yeah, very spring like today. Yeah. I mean, it was on the mild side. It was warm. We almost hit 80 degrees here in San Antonio and other communities did. Yeah, it felt like there was more moisture in more, the air. Just more to the air yeah. today. That's exactly what we had and don't get too used to it. We'll have it again tomorrow, but a cold front's going to change everything for the weekend. And that cold front's likely going to bring some thunderstorms as well. And so let's take a look at the severe weather threat as we go on into tomorrow. Uh, straight line winds are the primary threat, as is usually the case around here. But there is also the potential for some pockets of large hail and maybe even a brief isolated tornado spin up, especially east of San Antonio. So if a severe storm does develop tomorrow afternoon, maybe 60 to 70 mile per hour gusts, isolated hail up to two inches diameter. And again, a few quick spin ups are possible. So let's take you through time this evening. Quiet temperatures in the 60s. Uneventful, not a big deal. We start the day tomorrow with low clouds and I think some areas of drizzle and a few sprinkles, but the cold front that's still in West Texas 8 AM tomorrow. Cold fronts in West Texas. As we go through time, though, the lunch hour noon a OK, just a few sprinkles and mild throughout the day tomorrow. Then into the afternoon and early evening, that's when the cold front hits and it's likely to develop a thin line of thunderstorms, some of which could become strong to severe. And I think our main time frame for thunderstorm threat here in San Antonio is anywhere from about 4 to 8 p.m. What it really hinges on is exactly where that line develops because there is a potential that it develops maybe in eastern Bear County and then moves out of here. There's also the chance we could see it develop in the hill country and then strengthen right before it moves into San Antonio. So about 4 to 8 p.m. is the time frame. Here's our uh, severe weather risk as provided by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. And where you see the yellow, that's a slight risk, basically a two out of five on a scale. And the orange is where there's a much higher risk, where it's more of an enhanced risk risk. And notice how that's east of San Antonio. We're right on the edge of this slight risk. So yeah, there is that potential uh, for a few isolated storms to quickly develop tomorrow. All right, so let's talk about today. Look at that 79. The high temperature is a warm day. The average is 62. We missed a record by only five degrees today and that was set back in 1917. Still mild. 60s, even right near 70. Floresville at 70, Castroville 71. Helotus is 69 and 68 on the south side at Stinson. Right, so tomorrow, another warm day. We'll start the day at 64, make it to near 80 in the afternoon, and we're giving it about a 40% chance of storms because not everybody's going to get hit by the thunderstorm activity. It's going to be a thin line. It'll probably have some breaks in the line as well. Um, but as it moves through, it's going to be swift 4 to 8 p.m. And then that rain chance moves far east of San Antonio by 9, 10 p.m. Into the weekend behind the cold front. Check this out. Bright sunshine, temperatures in the 60s. That's afternoon temperatures. Sunday morning, Myra. We'll be back down in the 30s. Weekend looking nice. Yeah, welcome as back winter. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Adam. An update tonight on the San Antonio Zoo's efforts to help out Australia. In a tweet, the zoo announced it would be taking donations and match the first $5,000 donated to its Australia Wildlife Fund. The money will help provide supplies and staff needed for rescue, recovery, and the care of injured or orphaned animals. The zoo also offered to send veterinarians and animal care specialists to Australia. It's estimated that more than a billion, a billion mammals, birds and reptiles have been killed by the ongoing wildfires there. The flames have also killed at least 25 people and destroyed 2000 homes. A jarring arrest made by SAPD of a man accused of selling a woman for sex for years. A Florida teacher caught on camera putting a student in a chokehold, what reportedly led up to that, and satellite images showing just how much of Puerto Rico is still in the dark. This is tonight's Night at Nine. A local man arrested for allegedly selling a woman for sex over the course of several years. Joseph Sanchez Davila is now charged with human trafficking. He would transport her from place to place, forcing her into sex acts. Uh, putting her on a website, advertising her, 
uh, for a price. More arrests may be made as this investigation continues. The fiance of a murdered Austin woman is speaking publicly for the first time since police made an arrest in the case. Last month, Heidi Broussard was reportedly kidnapped and killed, and the couple's newborn daughter was taken. The little girl is now home. I just wish her mom was here. The suspect has been identified as Megan Fiera Muska, one of Broussard's best friends. She was a, she was a friend, you know? Like, you would not suspect this at all. Like, at all. Fiera Muska is now charged with kidnapping and tampering with evidence. Police say she deceived the family by allegedly faking her own pregnancy and plotting to steal Broussard's baby to pass off as her own. A middle school teacher in Florida is accused of violently grabbing and shoving a student. He's now been arrested and charged with battery. The sheriff's department has released a cell phone recording of the incident. It reportedly began when the student started playing music and refused to turn it down. When the teacher took the computer, police say that student called him a derogatory name. That's when the teacher allegedly put the teen in a chokehold and shoved him. New NASA satellite pictures show just how much of Puerto Rico is without power. About two thirds of the island is without electricity after a series of earthquakes and aftershocks. Engineers say about 75% of homes should have power by the weekend, but some people could be without power for a year. Former Antonian High School substitute teacher Laurel Ruiz admitted taking what were called upskirting photographs of a high school girl and girls. Laro Ruiz pleaded guilty to obscenity charges today as part of a plea deal. Ruiz was a substitute teacher and coach at Antonian High School in the spring of 2014 when the conduct occurred. According to court records, Ruiz would take his cell phone and place it on a backpack adjacent to his desk, then call students forward. Ruiz has been placed on community supervision for five years. The brazen robbery of an 81 year old woman caught on camera in Houston. The woman was walking to a train station when a Cadillac Escalade pulled up. The suspect ran up to her, grabbed her purse and threw her on the ground in the process. Police are still searching for that suspect tonight. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg says she is cancer free. Ginsburg has battled the disease four times. Her most recent scare was when she was treated for a malignant tumor on her pancreas in August. Police in Georgia releasing this video of a Taco Bell break in. The suspect is seen breaking in, cooking himself a meal and then taking a nap. He later stole a laptop and tablet and ran off. He has still not been found. This is the world's largest mosaic made from recycled materials. It's in Mazdar City in Abu Dhabi. The Guinness World Record presented the city with the official record certificate this week. The artwork stretches out to around the size of two basketball courts. More than 90,000 recycled items were used to make it. To read more about these stories, go to our website, ksat.com. Since 2019, two thirds of fired San Antonio Police Department officers won their jobs back through arbitration. The case at 12 defenders have been working on an hour long investigative special tackling police misconduct and disciplinary procedures. Broken Blue airs this Sunday on case at 12 and on our digital platforms. That's at 9 p.m. The defenders have been publishing stories this week leading up to that special. You can find those on our website. You can see that coverage right now. Go to ksat.com slash broken blue. You're watching KSAT News at 9 tonight. We'll be back in just one minute.
The United States and other world leaders now saying it is highly likely that Iran is responsible for shooting down a Ukrainian jetliner near Tehran, killing all 176 people on board. New video released appears to show a missile fired into the sky near Tehran and striking an object. The video was taken at around the time the plane crashed. World leaders from the U.S., leaders from Canada, Britain agree it's possible that the missile was fired at the Boeing plane by mistake amid intentional missile launches and high tensions after a U.S. drone strike killed an Iranian general. Uh, it was flying in a pretty rough neighborhood and somebody could have made a mistake. Uh, some people say it was mechanical. I personally don't think that's uh, even a question. Iran denies shooting down the jet and says it invites impacted countries to participate in the investigation, including the U.S., since the Boeing jet was manufactured here. There were no Americans killed in that plane crash. On board were passengers from Iran, Canada, Ukraine, Sweden, Afghanistan, Germany, and Britain. Turning now to some of the biggest stories people are talking about tonight. Video from outside the jail cell of Jeffrey Epstein during his first apparent suicide attempt no longer exists. New York prosecutors say the surveillance video wasn't properly preserved. They blame technical errors. The missing video is from July. Epstein was found dead in his jail cell the following month. His death was ruled a suicide. The Centers for Disease Control now saying the youngest person to die from vaping related lung injuries was just 15 years old. More than 2,600 people have been hospitalized because of lung injuries due to vaping in all 50 states, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Researchers still don't know exactly what is causing these injuries, but they believe that vitamin E acetate is the most likely culprit. Weather and climate events cost the U.S. $45 billion last year. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration cites hurricanes, tornadoes, flooding and fires as among those disasters. In all, the U.S. saw 14 events in 2019 that brought more than a billion dollars each worth of damage. A collection of masterpieces and modern art. The McNay Art Museum has stood in the heart of San Antonio for decades. RJ Marquez looks at the history of the McNay and the woman who was responsible for creating one of the finest collections not only in the state, but around the world. It's tonight's Throwback Thursday. With its blend of art and architecture, the McNay Art Museum has been a Texas and San Antonio staple for more than 60 years. And we're the very first modern art museum in all of Texas, but we didn't start that way. In fact, if you would have visited us on this very spot 100 years ago, you would have been standing in a 100-acre goat farm. The museum was originally the home of its namesake, Marion Kugler McNay. It was built in the 1920s during the Spanish colonial revival movement and still features the same distinct ceilings, columns, and courtyard. McNay was an artist, educator, and visionary. She collected pieces of art from galleries in New York, LA, and Chicago. That collection was the foundation of the McNay Museum. She had advisors on both coasts calling her and identifying works of modernism for her growing collection. No one in South Texas was collecting in this way. There was no comparable collection in this part of the United States. One of the very first paintings McNay bought was an early masterpiece by prominent Mexican artist Diego Rivera. It's a 1927 portrait of a five-year-old Mexican girl named Delfina Flores. It's still an iconic work in the collection, continues to be an enchanting work for the youngest visitors to our grounds and our campus. She didn't focus only on artists in Paris or New York. She went south of the border in her definition of modernism to include Mexico. McNay passed away in 1950 at the age of 67. Her vision was to transform her home into a modern art museum. Within four years of her death, the McNay opened its doors to the public. The art museum began with Mrs. McNay's collection of 700 pieces of art and has grown to more than 23,000 pieces of art, some of which are loaned out to institutions around the world, making the McNay one of the premier museums around the globe. 
Today, the McNay welcomes 200,000 visitors annually that enjoy works from some of the most world-renowned artists, including Georgia O'Keeffe, Pablo Picasso, and Vincent van Gogh. This year, the McNay will open its first fashion exhibition with a focus on the 90s, an exhibition dedicated to Selena Quintanilla, and this summer, its largest exhibition that celebrates Mexican artists such as Rivera, Frida Kahlo, Orozco, and Siqueiros. It continues Marion McNay's legacy of engaging the San Antonio community through beauty and representation. All of the acquisitions that enter this building, the new works that we bring in to grow the collection, speak directly to who we are as San Antonians, what we look like, and what we're passionate about. You might hear noise in the background during KSAT News at 9. You want to know why? Our set is right in the middle of the always busy KSAT 12 newsroom. We are just feet away from reporters, producers, photographers, editors who were all working to put together the stories you see here on the news at 9 and throughout the day on KSAT 12. This is the assignment desk, really the control center of the KSAT 12 newsroom. Our assignment desk editor keeps track of all of these police and fire scanners to make sure our crews are headed out the door to see what's happening and make sure you know what's going on all around town. There's the KSAT 12 defenders tracking down the latest investigations and our weather team putting together an up to date forecast to make sure you are ready for your day. Streaming from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom is just one of the reasons this show looks and feels so unique and we're glad you're watching. What is trending tonight? Let's go to KSAT.com with Farah Sabawi and find out. Myra, uh, I know it's only January, but that doesn't mean Fiesta Fever has not started. Yet. Doesn't? Isn't that sort of a year-round thing? I think it us? is. I think it is, <laughs> but it's really starting to pick up steam early this year, um, and, and it's already coming with a vengeance, and people are excited all over the place. we got a lot of great designs that have already come out. We're talking about medals. Yeah, we're talking about the Fiesta medals. People love them. There's already a bunch that have been unveiled, and and uh, social media is loving them, especially, especially of course, this Baby Yoda Fiesta medal. Yes, if you thought you were going to go through Fiesta without a Baby Yoda no, medal. No, 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 not this year. Especially <laughs> not. No, absolutely. Yeah, Merit Coffee actually designed the, a, a Baby Yoda in a great little sombrero sipping a cup of coffee. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, and we got a lot of other great ones. Fiesta Chica's very popular medal that comes out every year. Yeah. And this year she's doing a Topo Chico inspired okay. theme. So there's just been, you know, I, I love it. I, I do think it's a little early to get too excited over these though, a little bit. Well, you know, it's not that far away when you think about it. It kind of creeps up on you and yeah. then it's like, it, you know, I know it's only a couple weeks long, but it's really a month long celebration when you oh, when you take sure. everything into account. If Whataburger is not enough for you these days, Myra, there is a new burger joint coming to San Antonio and it's one that's known for a nine patty burger. Nine patties? Nine patties. It is no joke. This is for one person? Yeah, one person or I mean, I guess you can split it, but there's only two buns. So I don't know how you'd work that out. You got to figure that out. That seems like a personal problem. It's going to be a big one. Uh, the restaurant's called Wayback Burgers. Uh, they have locations around the country and already a couple in Texas, uh, but they're planning on opening two lo locations in the San Antonio area. One is going to be uh, off uh, 281 and uh, 1604. Okay. And the other will be uh, in Universal City. I know a lot of people are excited about these restaurants and their burgers look great. I'm going to have to check it out. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the last story of the day, I really love this one. It's all about what's in a license plate. Frankly. Ah, this is interesting. I checked out this article earlier today. Yeah, so the Texas Tribune uh, actually has this great story. Now, they focus on one Texas resident who uh, had a, they, the DMV granted this resident a uh, license plate that says Jail 45, which was a reference to President Donald Trump. And they later actually took it back. Okay, said, which is rare that yeah. they say yes and then say, oh, that never That has only mind. happened a dozen times over the past year that they've granted the license plate and then in a review process figured out that, wait a minute, this could be uh, either politically motivated or it could include uh, gender, race. There's a lot of really uh, broad factors in which they um, can pull these license plates. What's great about this story, too, is that there's a list online that you can click on and see all the license plates that were rejected in 2019. Oh, um, wow, that is cool. Yeah, I actually uh, wrote down a couple. <laughs> of my favorites. Uh, one is good. LOL officer is a good one. That's going to be great when you get pulled over. It's a good conversation starter. 
uh, yeah. that one's good. Fat and Nuts, uh, which was my nickname in high school. Uh, but it's okay. We've gotten over it. We've gotten past it. We've we were so close it. to I getting know. through this segment, Andrew. So very close. I'm sorry. Okay, it was a good one. Um, there's a lot of funny ones. Uh, cocaine, but spelled with K's instead of C's, I guess, to try to get by uh, the filters. Yeah, you know, that's always, that's what you do. You just add the K. Didn't, the <laughs> didn't work out that well for them. Uh, and one of uh, my favorite ones, last one I'll bring up here, is uh, FHOA. I guess this ah. person really has a vendetta with their homeowners association. Wow, did they just drive that around the block continuously? I think or? that would be an HOA violation. I'm not sure they're allowed to do that. So that's something, uh, you know, he might be thankful it got rejected, actually. Might have done and I'm telling you, Ferris it. hasn't even touched on all the fun in that article. Oh, trust <laughs> me. There's a lot more there, a lot more to talk about. Thank you. Of course, as anytime. always, for this memorable moment. I had fun. Did you have fun? <laughs> I did. That's what it's yeah, all about. This is the highlight of my day. This is it, right here. Anytime, <laughs> We'll be right back. That does it for this edition of KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night.